it's only 3 p.m. Um, yeah, so that off-season shenanigans happened. Um, in my opinion, the Canes went from a cup contender to a bona fide playoff contender to where we can potentially make the playoffs, probably looking to make the playoffs. But, man, this was a team that was looking like next year or the year after we could win a cup. And, you know, it's the same thing that I've been worried about for a while is Carolina can't sign their pending free agents. It's, they just they struggle to do it. Svechnikov, at the time I'm recording this, still hasn't signed. And I'm going to get into everything after that, including the big one, the latest one that they seem to purposefully wait a while before this at. But I'll just kind of, I'll just read through the depth chart and then go through who we lost and then lastly who we got. So, um, you know. So here's, and then I'll get into the big controversial signing at the end, because I was going to record the video and thinking about what I said before this. So per Alex O'Hari uh, with a, a, and then their Twitter handles, Future Canes, they tweeted out the depth chart, which was a lot easier for me to uh, just read off there. So Svech Aho Turbo, which is the same as it's been. Nino, Trocek, Natchez. I like that second line. Nino, I think, isn't always a second line uh, left winger, but right winger, I should say. But when he's on his game, he is. It just, he's inconsistent. Uh, Stahl, Faust with a question mark. Lievo, Lorenz, Marty. Lievo, of course, being a new signing. Cheap deal. Depth free agent signings, I think, is normally what you want your team to do. Uh, Slavin and Bear at the time of record of like the time I screenshotted this, we're looking to be our top two defensemen. Bear for Fogel, I think, was a win, and I think was a good trade. Bringing in a defensive defenseman like Bear, I think if you look at Bear as a replacement for Jake Bean, that's actually an upgrade. Even though I like Jake Bean, and I think Jake Bean has a great future in the NHL, but you know, Bear is a better defenseman. Bear for if you're looking at a top six defenseman, maybe top four. Bear is going to be more reliable, especially in top six. So I like that. Shea Pesci, that duo is pretty good. You got the offensive minded defenseman with the defensive minded defenseman, is what you want. And then Jake Gardner and Ian Cole. Again, Jake Gardner, I think, you know, for bottom six, you don't really want that offensive minded defenseman. But on the power play, Jake Gardner can come in handy. And Ian Cole was a good depth signing. And then Anderson and Ranta. So here's the thing. I think Jarvis, or even maybe the NHL is just looking at training camp and they're going to want to start promoting some of their minor league players. So that third line blank to me is fine because if you can find Jarvis or another player who's been trying, Max McCormick, you know, just if you're trying to give your uh, future a shot, I actually think that's okay. Especially because I think Jarvis should be NHL ready next year. But we'll see. You know, it, it could still be another year. And then Anderson and Ranta for goalie. And here's the thing. Carolina, even still at the time of recording this, whether how good they're going to be depends on how much Anderson can bounce back. Ranta's a good backup. If we still had Nadalkovich, Ranta would be a great signing for us. But Anderson, he's not... He doesn't snuff up the par, and we're paying him more than we would have paid Nadelkovic. And Nadelkovic had a better year last year. It's just like that Nadelkovic trade looks worse and worse the more time goes on. And I just, I don't get it other than the fact that Carolina doesn't know how to sign upcoming free agents. They just, they don't. I mean, Svechnikov, even on the first line, he's not been signed yet. And then they lose McGinn, but, you know, if they're, I would have said not sign Lievo and keep McGinn, but, you know, McGinn, he got a good deal for him in Pittsburgh. He's earned the money. I hate that he's going to Pittsburgh. I'll always be a fan of Brock McGinn because he's Brock McGinn. I was going to buy his jersey. Can't really anymore. But, you know, I uh, I think Brock McGinn was a great hurricane. He really was an exam He was a late-round pick that we traded Ron Francis for in 2004. Yeah, you know, I, I really did like... Uh, Brock McGinn as a player. It sucks to lose him. 
Dougie Hamilton walking, especially if it was only 8.6, I think you should have offered him 9 million. When you're in a win now mode, you're going to have to overpay your core that you're trying to win a cup with. This was a team that almost won the President's Trophy. They've more than proved themselves to me. For sure, I think, you know, so you're going to have to overpay some of your players if you want to have sustained success. And Tom Dunn didn't want to overpay Dougie Hamilton. So then my thought process was you trade Gardner and a first and maybe a prospect to get a good offensive defenseman from a rebuilder. And I was going to look on who that would be. And then the news dropped that basically confirmed Tony D'Angelo is now a Carolina Hurricane. Now, I don't like the signing because he's a locker room cancer. Like I said before, I'm a right-leaning guy, but you don't get cut from the NHL after a career year for being a conservative. It wasn't politics why he wasn't cut. And, you know... It's just, it's not a good look for the Hurricanes, especially because he has a history of racism, apparently. I don't know enough about it. Never been in a locker room with him. But the player allegedly does have it. And Ethan Bear, I love that trade. Ethan Bear coming in was a great idea. But the fact that you bring in Ethan Bear and then bring in a player with that history, you've really got to trust your leadership in the locker room and coaching, which I do trust Rod Brindamore. I love Rod Brindamore, all-time favorite player. All-time favorite coach. Favorite coach in Hurricanes history. I think he's already the second best coach in Hurricanes history. But, you know, like, when just looking at that uh, Rod, not Rod Bernard, looking at that Tony D'Angelo deal, it just, it's not a good look when you can trade for that offensive defenseman or re-sign Dougie, who's even better than Tony D'Angelo in his peak. Now, Tony D'Angelo, I will say this. I'm not going to be super close-minded about it. I will say, they do need to cap like talk about this immediately. Tony D'Angelo needs to come out, address the things he's done, address that he's looking for change, all of that, say all the right things, and then I'm somewhat... Sorry about that, I had people walking in the background. But as I was saying with Tony D'Angelo, if he comes out and says the right thing... Hey, buddy. Um, if Tony D'Angelo says the right things, then, you know, I can be open-minded about it. I'm not going to hold everything against him. I'm a big proponent of people can change, but I just, I don't think it's a good look for the Hurricanes. I don't think it's a good look for management, and it's going to take a lot. He's a locker room cancer. So, you know, I think a lot of what relies on us is how good Anderson plays. That doesn't change. It's only a one-year deal for Tony D'Angelo, so... This is kind of his last chance. I think he knows that. I think that's going to be a sign of maturity. Antonio Brown managed to do really well for the Buccaneers. Could be a similar situation to that. So it's not like players in locker room cancers can't turn things around, but it's just why put yourself in that position. And, I mean, I still think you should still trade Gardner for a defenseman with more offensive upside who is better than Tony D'Angelo. But... Yeah, I mean, all in all, this uh, this was a bad free agency for the Hurricanes. So it's been a bad off season. We downgraded goalies. Defense is downgraded. Offense is basically the same. So you know, I'll see you guys for the start of the regular season, or if any trades or anything else happens this off season.